This is so fun. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is us. Are you going to start? No. Should I? Um, no. No. Okay. So we've been talking about doing this for a hot minute. We've been talking about this for a while about talking, just doing like video stuff. Like we always talk about this. We always banter about it. And we talked about maybe doing it on video. And we've done it before. And it didn't go very well. It didn't go very well at all. That was what, two, three years ago now? Uh, I feel like it was probably less, but we're just embarrassed. What went so wrong with it? Everything. I, we just looked like dumb and we sounded dumb. I, I think at one point I like did my hair scene. <laughs> yeah, you definitely did that. Because I remember I wanted to keep it and you were like, nah, we can't have that at all. That has to die. Um, but yeah, when we were talking about doing it now, obviously after the pandemic, this was like a good time to try and chat and sit down with homies. And yeah, the only thing to start talking about is the pandemic and all that we've been through in the last fucking year and this disaster that's been. Um, my little cheat sheet we got here. I don't know what these notes are going to help us with, but they exist if we need them for something. Um, but yeah, do you remember where you were when like the pandemic started? Like what was like the first, I think you were like at a shoot you said, there's something going on. I was at a on? show. You were um, at a show? I was at a show in Boston and I just remember like we were all upstairs and then we started getting texts from like different people like, oh, our tour's canceled. And then I was like, damn, that sucks. And then it was like another one. And then I was like... All right. And then it was like another one. And then a bunch of people. It just so happened to be like that night. I remember there were so many people, even on Twitter, like just announcing it. And then we were all just kind of looking at each other and like, you know, they were on the tour. Yeah. They were there. And I was just visiting. And I was like. What city were you in? Do you remember? Boston. Damn. Yeah. And that was the last time that I was at a show or in like a room filled with people. Yeah, we had that one like live stream at the Webster oh, yeah. with Dreamwake. That was like kind like it kind of got the fix, but like there was no crowd, so I didn't feel threatened, you know. Yeah, but like when we were there, it felt like okay, we're almost to the end, and that was in like what June? Like no, I think that was in. I don't even know what month we're in. Yeah, I don't know. It was a while ago. I feel like yeah. Maybe. I don't even know. I remember I <laughs> like I didn't think like the pandemic was real. Like I was hearing about it, and we always thought that like. We've always heard about, like, swine flu and, like, H1N1 and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, it's another one of those. Like, we're just getting scared. And then I got an email. I was, remember I was working, and I got an email from a production company saying that one of our shows at a college was canceled. And I was like, for a college to cancel, so, like, an event, like, there's real money involved now. Like, they're not just, like, canceling right. for fun. And I was going through my emails, like, uh, recently, within the last month or so. And I found it. And my reply to the email was like, hopefully we don't lose too many more shows. And I was like, oh, damn, if only, like, I knew. <laughs> if only we knew that. It was uh, it was definitely like the craziest thing throughout the Munich community, Munich music community. Like, I remember there were like arguments all over Twitter. They were like, "Yeah, if you don't cancel your tour, you're an idiot." And they were like, "If you do cancel your tour, you're an idiot." And, and then, then like, it was just like, "What do you do?" Because nobody knew anything at yeah. that time. And then like seven rounds of like, "It's back. Let's do it next month." And the next month comes, and we're like, it's actually way worse than it was last month. Maybe Your we'll do another month. Your tickets are refunded for sure. <laughs> like, So annoying. And then now like they're being rescheduled. I just like, it's crazy to me that there's going to be a show that was supposed to happen in 2020. It's going to happen in like 2023, and it's the same ticket. I got refunds. <laughs> <laughs> loyal fan you are. So loyal. I was like, you know... I'll see that show when I see it, but, like, <laughs> right now, this is something I want. I think the difference between us, like, because we go to so many shows, we're so spoiled that, like, when they get canceled, we're like, we'll get to another one. Where I think most people, like, a concert is, like, it's a once-a-year thing. Like, that's, like, your thing, and when that shit gets yeah. canceled, it's like, no, nah, I'll wait three years. I'll make it happen. But, oh, uh, that's Chris coming down. That's so fire. Um, but, yeah, I didn't think the vi virus would last at all. Like, I thought it was, yeah, going to be a couple of weeks when we'll be back. And then next thing we knew, we were shut down and nothing was happening and all the gigs get canceled. And it was like, what do we do? Like, you have a day job. So I think it gave you something to do during the day. Like, I was home. You were for a little bit. I was home. You were for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was home too. And I just like, I don't know what to do with myself. I was like, we've spent so much time like defining ourselves through concerts and content and bands and music. And all we do is that. And then all of a sudden that was gone. It was like, uh, now what? So I just like dove into my computer and I started learning like 3D stuff and software mm. and tried to like make the time useful. But it was all like, this isn't what I want to do. Like nothing good is happening right now. I'm just like trying to make bad like a little bit less yeah, bad. Yeah, but like you, you were in it. You were studying that shit like nobody's yeah. business. Yeah, it was, it was dark. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> I was literally doing that play Call of Duty for like hours a day. I probably played like 
two or three hundred hours in like a couple of months there. It was like literally just that and Blender. Remember when the servers kept crashing because everyone was home? <laughs> Wild. All the memes, like everything was fantastic for like <laughs> the content of those pieces and like watching all technology fail and everything. I don't know. It, it like, I didn't realize how much shows mattered to me until they were gone. And then all of a sudden yeah. it was like, oh, this piece, and not just like the, like the show, but like seeing all the people and like feeling the energy and like being in a venue and like going to something mm-hmm. and having something to look forward to. Uh, yeah and it was gone (laughs) yeah it was gone really fast and then it went from like um I mean I feel like me and you shot in pretty similar regularity like I was out multiple nights a week shooting shows and it went from that to like I felt like I don't know Tom Hanks and Castaway like (laughs) That's I was exactly like, what I was thinking. I was looking at my camera like, Wilson, <laughs> Kenan. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, what did you do? Like, did you work at all? Did you shoot around the apartment? I don't even remember. I just started taking a lot of nature photos right. um, because I had bought the Sony and I was like, I'm going to learn video. And then it was like. <laughs> <laughs> you thought. Yeah. It yeah. was like, no, you're not actually. You're going to stay home. Um, I really could have learned video like that's on me, but I didn't. I took a lot of pictures of nature and random stuff and just tried to learn different ways to grow my editing. Um, I don't think I'll ever learn what I want to learn and reach the goal that I have for myself, which is fine. I think we all have that though. Like just, uh, yeah, like I would love to like do more 3d. Like I've done like little scenes, but I've always talked about our shower just started running. And I, I swear to God, if that comes through, I'm going to kill my roommate. I probably shouldn't say that live. That's your thing. But <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out, Aaron. But <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, not how shows. Oh, yeah, you're saying you want to learn video. Yeah, I think we all have that thing of, like, I, I want to do this, like, this lofty goal. Of, and it's about, like, doing a little thing each day. But, like, yeah, how did you – so you started doing nature. Did you have, like, any inspiration or was it just, like, I have to do something? Like, did you want to create Um, or was like, I have to not be on my couch? (laughs) So I started um, on Twitter. I follow a lot of creatives, a lot of um, people that, I don't know, I see something, they tweet and I'm like, yo, that's sick. So there's this one girl, her name's Diabla. I don't know her actual name. I can't remember it. But she does a lot of, like, really cool nature photos um, with, like, clouds and stuff. And I said, you know, I can't take pictures of people, but there's always clouds. <laughs> so. Do you know where she's from? No, I don't. Oh, well. Shout out Mysterious Girl from some I think her, her handle is, like, Alice Hysteria or something like That's that. That's probably it for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think you got it first try. Yeah. <laughs> Was it hard, like, as a human? Like, I definitely, like. Once I like, couldn't create and couldn't have this thing, all of a sudden, like, everything else started to fall apart. Like, everything else got more stressful and everything else got kind of hairy. Like, did you notice not having that outlet, like, affect your your soul? Um, absolutely. I would go back and look at my Instagram very often. Yeah. And I would be like, wow, I would edit that so different now. Like, yep. I have all this time to do this. And it started, like, making me feel like my photos were literal garbage. Like, yep. I was just like, yo, I can't believe somebody reposted this. Why? Why yeah. did they do that? Yeah. And I had nothing new that I could work on to prove that I've progressed except old photos, which I would use different settings on now. Yeah. Yeah. I – the other thing, I definitely, like, got critical of my work. I found that, like, I never appreciated – somehow, like, I hated it and loved it more at the same time because the other thing – like, I definitely got critical of it, but I also, like it, – it became, like, a time capsule. It was like, oh, shit, remember when we were here? Like – Remember this moment of like being at the Palladium and like having the thing spray in your face, whatever the CO2 cannons <laughs> launch off <laughs> and like all the people pushing and shoving and like the crowd server dodging you. And like, yeah, I don't know. I think we always like document other people's lives. And that was the first moment where I was like, oh shit, this is actually like my own life that I'm documenting too. Yeah. Yeah. I've done a lot of like, you know, this year I want to be in the photos. Like, That's cap though. I know, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, we can try. We can try, but. I feel like as a creative, a lot of people, um, they look at you as a creative. They don't, you know, you're you're obviously, you can be their friend and stuff, yeah. but at the end of the day, you're there to provide a service and make them look good. So when you're there, they're not thinking, hey, jump in this photo. So during quarantine, it really hit me hard because, you know, all my friends were posting pictures like, miss this tour, miss this, da-da-da-da-da, and they're yeah. tagging me, but like, I'm really not there. 
Yep. Like, let's be real. I'm not there. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's definitely that weird relationship of like, yeah, once money gets involved and like content gets involved, like I definitely have people that I work with that I'm good friends with, but there's yeah. always like a, it takes a while for like the skepticism to go away. Yeah. Like for the first while, it's like, are we like actually buddies? Like, what do you want from me? And also like, I don't want to get too close to you because I like, I want to do business too. Like I, like homie rates like ruin everything. Like I, I love it. Like I, I don't want to try to buy friends the full rate. Like I want to... They're my friends. I want to take care of them. I want to hook them up. But, like, uh, it fucks your finances. Like, there's a reason I charge what I charge when I start taking money off of that. Like, it's my pocket I'm affecting. It doesn't yes. help anyone. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, managing that and still being friends with people. And it's like, I want to be friends with you, but if we're too close, then I have to give you the homie rate. And, like, uh, and it just, like, yeah, it gets so messy. I definitely learned the word no over quarantine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've, it's a tough uh, one. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we had a lot of time to sit there and think about it. And I I know personally for myself, I struggle a lot with the boundary between friend and business partner, Um, especially because you get so close with these people, seeing them so regularly and everything. But it's such like a intimate closeness, too, because like when or what I found is that like so many musicians that I've talked to, like it can be hard to talk to them like this. But once they have the guitar in their hand, like all of a sudden you're like, oh, we can connect now. Like, I really get you. And you only see them in those moments where they're so comfortable and so free to yeah. express themselves that you really, like, get the most, like, intimate, raw version of them. Like, you get them at 3 a.m. when they're pissed off after a shitty show and you get them at 8 a.m. when they wake up and they don't want to be alive. Like, you just get to know people at their most, like, intimate and vulnerable parts. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, like, I feel like you can spend, like, a tour with someone who's only, like, a week or two, let's say. But, like, yeah, you know them like someone you've known for 10 years. Like, it's such an intimate thing that yeah it just gets messy i don't know so with touring do you think like like do we get back to shows like what are we what are we looking at now i don't um, like we're starting to hear about like half capacity shows and i just feel like that's a nightmare like i have no interest in being like a half cap venue and like a bubble with like six feet of tape around me like it's better than no shows but my biggest question has been you know like we have festivals like i'm trying to think of one boston calling for example yeah. where you know you have the stage and then you have like the photo pit Mm -hmm. and then you have like oh they give you access to the crowd um which they consider the photo pit and the crowd access media passes so now it's like you know there's social distancing so that puts us six feet away from the stage already so where's the barricade going in the venue with the crowd i never even thought about that yeah how do you keep yeah yeah like there's only six feet between the barricade and the stage And if they're already, like, cutting into capacity to have, like, less people in there because they need distancing, like, they're They're not going to want to move the barrier back to... Interesting. But I feel like once shows come back, like, we are... We as content creators are, like, at a premium for a moment. Like, I think content's always been valuable, but especially these first couple shows, it's, like, establish yourself. Come back big. Come back strong. Doge. We are the doge. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to the moon, but we're going to take also. But it's fine. Yeah, I don't know. I I just can't imagine being in a venue at half capacity. Like, I think the whole fun of a show is being, like, smushed together. <sighs> also, side note, we've been watching, like, I've been watching and making you watch, like, festivals and, like, outdoor shit. It looks insane. Like, I can't imagine being around, like, a thousand people, like, crammed in at Warp Tour. So... Like, it feels so impossible. And I feel like when you're young and you're there... It's like, this is so sick. I'm doing this. Like, I remember being at shows and being so tight in the crowd. I could, like, take both my feet off the ground and just be there. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I would come out and be like, oh, my God, you got to (laughs) experience that. Like, I would be getting spit on, like, hit armpit sweat. But as an adult looking at that, I'm just – I have no interest in especially now with, like, you know, germs and stuff. It's just – I think germs, like, just became cool in the last, like, a year. Like, before that, like, when people were, like, over-sensitive, I was like, we all ate dirt as kids. Like, you're going to be okay. Mm. And now it's like, if I, like, touch a doorknob and don't wash my hands, like, I think I'm going to burn. Right. It's – and the thing is, is, like, a lot of people haven't even gotten, like, regular seasonal, like, cold and flu stuff. So it's crazy to look back on what we actually did before COVID. Like – yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. So many musicians really spit on us. They put water in their mouth. And, like, <laughs> yep. and you're just there and you're like. Yeah. With all the people behind us just like breathing like all their air right onto us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I remember like waiting in line 
I, like, I vividly remember like it was like you'd wear like a shorts and t-shirt because the venue was going to be a thousand degrees and you knew you're going to be in the middle of everyone. So it's we're in New England, so it's cold as shit in the winter. And yeah, it'd be December and you're out there in shorts and t-shirt and 10 degrees waiting from like 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Yep, outside the Palladium wrapped around the side. Yo, I loved that. was like the best part. Like I, I met one of my like closest friends in that line. Like I... Like, the lines were almost as much fun as a show. Like, just meeting all the people and, like, the energy yes. and the buzz and everyone is so eager in their, like, band shirts and they're all done up in their makeup and whatever. We used to order like, pizza in the lines. <sighs> that what was... happened? Yeah, we suck now. We're so lame. We, it, You know what it was? It was just the ability to just be able to walk into a venue. Yeah. And just be like, oh, I don't have to wait. It's, it's more so spoiled. We're so spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice to, like, show up at doors. If they have your photo pass, though, that's always a thing. I don't miss that. I don't miss trying to get photo passes. No. I miss, like, having it and being at the show, but everything, like, between, like, the show being announced and actually getting to the show, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need any of that. I I mean, you know and I know how many times we both, like, just sat outside venues like, yeah, um, TM, please find it in your heart <laughs> to look at your phone in between sets and see this Instagram DM that yep. is probably in your requests. Yep. You're sending messages to people you know <laughs> are never going to find them. You're just like digging through like emails on Facebook and like any manager they might have had, any association, like fucking like vocalist sister. You're like, please tell them I need it. I never um, did that, just for the record. It's also going to be really hard with publicists. Because I doubt everyone still has the same one. And throughout the entirety of my career, I've built, yeah. you know, relationships with these people. Shout out Amy Adams Splitter. Amy Adams Splitter is a GOAT. Okay. Also, um, Mike Kublios, I think, or something from Fearless. or so, I don't know. Yeah. He's good. I used to know all the emails. <laughs> I used to, too. They were great. They yeah. were always very accommodating. And it's really rare, I feel like, to find a publicist that's willing to say, hey, you're a freelancer. I'll at least give you a photo pass. Like that, yeah. I think that's a good accommodation for, like, you know, an exchange for photos. I feel yeah. like that's fair, equal, yeah. because it's technically, like, the value of a ticket and a guest spot list, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I'm sure Guess it's a terrible spot. job because so many – I've contacted many press publicists that I wasn't qualified to be talking to, and I'm sure there are many more people like me who are doing the same thing, and I don't know how you sort through those and separate people who are – like, you don't have time to look at everyone's portfolio. Like, that's just not your job. Right. Like, your job is to make the band money, not get a photographer into their press pass. And I'm, I feel like it'll absolutely be a lot more limited with the amount of photographers, but I've always felt like it should be because yeah. – there's been times, you know, we've shot shows and there's been like 20 photographers and it's like, I love you all. I think we should all get this opportunity, but yeah. maybe like let's do sets of songs or something because yeah. I kind of want to abuse you. If it's like, a festival, <laughs> if it's like a big thing, like... That's whatever. People, yeah, but, but it's like shows... When there's like seven people should be in there or like room for seven people and there's 35 plus security and crowd surfers. Yes. And then like seven of the band's yeah. friends and family and girlfriends are all coming to watch in the front, like props to them. But yeah, it makes life kind of hard for us. I feel like, um, you know, if if there was something that they did along the lines of groups of photographers go per song, that'd be dope. I mean, I feel like you're going to be able to get a same span of coverage depending on the lights and the setup. Yeah. Um, you got to make it work. But I think that's it's something that's definitely a possibility. On the flip side, I bet that a lot of bands have lost management during this and we haven't noticed because like you don't announce that you've cut ties with someone, but like there are a lot of expenses cut and if you're paying someone and you're not making money, you pay less people, that makes sense. So I wonder if we're gonna come back and there's more bands that are like now independent than we realize or like more accessible than we realize or than they used to be. I don't know. I have hiccups, hold on. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> cool well that was awesome thanks talk to you tomorrow okay okay bye is that really it i guess so i don't know <laughs>